We are live. Carrie Z. What's up, Greg Z? Yes, yes, yes. We are live. Okay, no, laugh at yourself. Who was first? Greg Z, you were first. So that means we're starting over. Greg Z, if you can make it first five times in a row, we are going to be doing a shot in honor of you. But here we all go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, people around the world, friends, family, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to the weekly beer and video review show with me, Danny Soleil, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan. We are hyped and ready to go. I'm watching you from my bathtub. It sounds because my mom steal all my bubbles okay well Greg that is very um that's a very strange thing to say as we open up the show but what the heck anything goes sort of kind on this show let's get started welcome thank you so much guys I'm really pumped we are really gonna have a fun show today Woo each and every week I look forward to seeing you guys I get ready I get prepared um, we got some amazing beers we got tenacious freak yeah the show is on tenacious freak how much did we miss you last week tons okay tons i know you had some work obligations but hey good to see you back here where's aqua nuts is she there if you're here go ahead and let me know yes gents bring the life jackets just in case dronic is in the house okay dronic from copenhagen we got jens from norway we are excited we're getting super pumped up about the show today thank you so much guys i'm going to run through my spiel and then we are going to get started because today is going to be a lot of fun um, I just want to go ahead and let you know that if it does shut off, it's super hot here. Mario, man, yes! All right, good to see you here, bud. Hang with us. I got another one of my students here. Where did my panties go? All right. Guys, if you're new to the show, let me tell you a little bit. Duffy, what up? Let me tell you, Aquanuts is here. Yes. Okay. Let me tell you a little bit about the show. If you're new to the show, what we go ahead and do is we talk about beers. Well, we review two beers. I tell you what they're like. I go ahead and drink them. Sometimes we get a little drunk if they're super strong, but well, all while having a good time. I go ahead and talk about the videos that came out last week on my channel. I preview the videos that are coming up this week on my channel. And all in between, we have a really fun show. Uh, Drunk, we had a heat wave here this summer. Yes, we did too in California. How hot is it in Copenhagen? All throughout the show, we have cool, fun. Hi, everyone. We have really fun segments like I do the show and tell segments. We do the what would, <laughs> we do the what would you rather segment. We have the this day in history segment. We have what are you reading, what are you watching segment, and we close it out with the quote of the week. It's gonna be a fun show. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Uncle John is here. Yes, Uncle John. Yes. Okay, is Aunt Pauline there too, Uncle John? We got a big special opening for Aunt Pauline. Is Aunt Pauline in the house? Are you watching Aunt Pauline? Guys, I hopefully my Uncle John is here. Uh, crazy guy Greg here. Yes, Aunt Pauline is here. Okay, stay tuned. We're going to do it in a little bit. Let's let everyone get warmed up here. Um, let's go ahead and introduce the first beer. And this first beer, oh my gosh, missed last week. But what would you rather? So sorry. You can always watch it on the playback. Guys, I'm going to tell you something that happened to me that was amazing. It was one of the best moments of my Travel Man Dan career. Um, let's have some fun, Greg Z. I'm gonna introduce the beers, but first I'm gonna tell you where they came from, how I got them, and why we're doing them. Guys, uh, you may have heard me before reference him on the show. My cousin Brian, who is there, he is. Heads up, is uh, dude. He, uh, Pulp Daddy is unfiltered. Okay, that is him right there, cousin Brian. I often refer to him when I do this day in history because he is an actual history teacher. What Miss Wujan is on? Don't worry, we got a fun one this time. But Brian, my cousin Brian, okay, also the son of Uncle John. All right, is a real history teacher. And he lives in Massachusetts. I think it's just outside of Worcester. Worcester, I am probably pronouncing that wrong, but a little bit of ways from Boston, about 45 minutes to an hour. And he's been telling me about all the local breweries in and around Boston and in parts of New England. And lo and behold, I come home from work the other day and holy <laughs> I don't even know. I guess shit, holy shit, right? 
I come home to a box. And I'm sorry, we're Worcester. I don't know. I think that's the sauce. I come home to the box, a big heavy box, much like the box Aqua Nuts and Tenacious Freak sent me. I go ahead, I rip this sucker open, and lo and behold, there is 11 cans of juicy delicious ipas from all around his area shouts out to you cuz i absolutely love you thank you so much and that's what we're doing today we're going to be drinking one of the beers we're going to be drinking two of the beers that cousin brian sent me and that's how i'm going to open up the show with the first beer being ladies and gentlemen let me introduce to you one of brian's favorite beers from the greater good imperial brewing company let's welcome in Pope Daddy. Wow. Look at that. Okay. This is the one we're doing. Now, if you go back to Brian's comment that popped up and he said, be careful, they are unfiltered. Um, so expect some chunks of stuff. Now, this one is going to register in at an 8%. So it is strong. It looks mean. Definitely Aquanuts. It's going to be a delicious tasting Indian Pal Al or AKA IPA. I'm really pumped about drinking this one. Um, it's got a pulp daddy. Yeah. So it's from Imperial Brewing Company. Brian, thank you so much, cuz. I really appreciate it. This is the first of your generosity that I'm going to go ahead and review. So uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and crack this sucker open and see if we can't see chunks of pulp from the unfilteredness. All right, cracking it up. Where is it made? It is made in Worcester. Worcester, Massachusetts. Oh, hey, Aston. Welcome. All right. Aston from England. Stay tuned, buddy. I got some fun day in history for you. All right. Wow. First thing I take a whiff out of this can, and it's very citrusy. It's got that citric hop flavor bursting out through the can. And boy, let me waft it in there. <sighs> smells really good. Smells really clean, really refreshing. And now this is the part that I'm excited about. Worcester has no CH. Okay. War Worcester. Worcester. All right. I don't know. You can tell me at Christmas. All right. Here we go. Let's go ahead and take a pour. Take a look. All right. Spilling all over the place. That's what I like to see. Getting the studio floor filled with beer. Wow. This sucker is. Wow. This sucker is looking thick. It's looking delicious. All right. As we pour into it, look at this. It's got a beautiful head to it. Okay, take a look at that creamy, milky, unfiltered look, right? It looks like like the color of corn would be. Oh, man, this is delicious. Now, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this cup down because I spilled a little bit out. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> All right, okay, let's take a look at this. This one looks mean. This one looks good. Okay, and once again, I know, look at it. That's the way an unfiltered beer looks like, okay? The thing I like about it is look how grainy it looks. Look at the color on that thing. And then look at that IPA tornado. It looks great. Cousin Brian, awesome. You see the IPA tornado going on. I mean, it, ju it just looks like, well, it looks like you're drinking a cup of sand with water in it. And it just really looks good under the light. Really delicious beer. I mean, I definitely haven't had a lot of those unfiltered beers. This is going to be one of few. But really enjoying the look on this one. As from you guys, you definitely want to go ahead and see if you can get your hands on this. Once again, we are drinking Greater Good Pulp Daddy right now. Okay, sent to me from Cousin Brian. 8%. Here we go. Let me go ahead and tell you what it tastes like. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uncle John, I got to get everyone amped up. Oh man. Wow. Wow. Juicy. That is delicious. It's not even like you're drinking anything. It's like you're eating something. I don't know what it is, but if it's the unfilteredness, but take a look. It is so thick and creamy. Drinking my first Budweiser ever. Holy, welcome to America. Yes, Tenacious Freak, let me know what you think of that Budweiser. We had California Weber. Oh, man, Drunatic. Wow. 
Okay. I bet you would rather drink sand as one of them. <laughs> That's a good one. It almost looks soupy. Yeah. It's so good. It's got, well, a flavor to it. Like, I've never tasted it before. It smells a lot like grapefruit. I'm going to go right back into it. Oh, man. You can taste the citrusness on it. Tastes a little bit like grapefruit, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a thick, kind of flavorful beer. It really kind of brings this element that you're almost like drinking like thick, kind of sludgy kind of stuff, but it's clean and smooth and man, really delicious. Man, Brian, you weren't joking around. Now there's a little bit left in the 16 ounce can. I'm gonna go ahead and pour that and we're gonna go ahead and sit on that. And we're gonna get right into the show today. Thanks a lot for joining me. If you just hopped on, we're drinking some delicious unfiltered IPA from Massachusetts. We'll just go with Massachusetts. We'll drop the city name. And, uh, well, we already introduced Cousin Brian. Uncle John's already busting balls. But, well, the glue that holds the family together is Aunt Pauline. And today is Aunt Pauline's birthday. That's right, Aunt Pauline is married to Uncle John, who is mother to Cousin Brian. So, Aunt Pauline, happy birthday. I love you. I hope you have a great day, a wonderful year. And <laughs> ain't nothing like putting her on blast. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sing Aunt Pauline a happy birthday. All right, so everybody ready? Everybody in Norway, in Denmark, England, Orlando, South Carolina, wherever you're in from, Get ready because we're going to sing Aunt Pauline a happy birthday. Here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Aunt Pauline. Happy birthday to you. Hey. All right. Happy birthday, Aunt Pauline. I hope you have a great day, a wonderful year. What I would do for that is I would go right on over to Good Guys Pizza and get yourself a large Good Guys and just hammer it down. Everybody, Uncle John's house, here's a keg in his garage. <laughs> no, but he's definitely got a lot of beers. Uncle John is not, um, he is, he is not going to ever run out of beer. <laughs> no problem, Uncle John. Happy birthday, Aunt Pauline. Uh, really fun day. Um, yeah, let's get let's get stuff rolling here. All right, I got my aunt's birthday, my cousin, <laughs> well, singing man Dan. <laughs> I never told you guys about the Travel Man Dan Christmas album. Don't worry, we're gonna see if we can get it done this year. Do you need something? <laughs> ninety two. Wow, Drunick, ninety two. That's awesome. By the way, Drunick, I I was looking at your watches. Do you own a watch shop? Budweiser tastes like wine and beer. <laughs> Dronatic, I checked out your 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 fancy ass watches. Um, I can I can do a little dance. How do you want me to do it? <laughs> I don't want to get out of frame, so I'll do a little wiggle. Anyway, let's get started, guys. I want to talk about the video that came out last week. Last week's video was a Reading Man Dan. We're still cranking away at the Reading Man Dan. Although I feel a little bit of a break coming. I feel like. I'm going to continue doing uh, Reading Man Dan, but I feel like I'm going to start to do a little bit more Travel Man Dan's. And, um, well, Reading Man Dan will just go to another day. But this past one, cigarette water. <laughs> Dude, you guys are hysterical. All right. <clears throat> so I went ahead and I did Reading Man Dan. But this Reading Man Dan was very special to me because... It was, uh, I was contacted by an author on Instagram. He had saw me doing a couple of the Dr. Seuss books and maybe uh, some of the other little books that I was doing. And he himself is an author. So we went back and forth over the DMs and I said, listen, I really like your books. I think your artwork, I think your message. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it was an awesome watch. Yeah, so um, I, I definitely was pumped up and he sent me this book. And I think I showed it to you. Celestina the astronaut ballerina and um, it was really fun to do tastes okay it's only 5% yeah a lot of people just are like eh, Budweiser but some people swear by it 
Really fun, great artwork, very cartoony, almost like 90s Rugrat style. But uh, the message is really good. That's what I really liked about it. Um, yeah, this is um, th th this message in here is all about pursuing your dreams. And sometimes when you're young, it's about like you know the people that you encounter, uh, whether it be your teachers, your peers, or the adults at home who are encouraging of your dream. And it takes us through Celestina's journey, and it's really fun. If you haven't seen, hey, how you doing, Sergerito two four zero five? Welcome to the show. If you haven't seen that episode, it's a lot of fun. I dress up in it. I, I put on full-on astronaut gear. Um, really cool. And the cool thing is, you know, Reading Man Dance, they'll get like 40 hits a week. I don't know. You know, it's like a slow progressional thing. It has a lot to do with the YouTube algorithm because I'm putting a whole different thing on my Travel Man Dan. Good book. Grown-ups can learn. Yes, they can. Um, so, so Reading Man Dan doesn't exactly grow as fast as other videos but already i got like 1500 views you should do reading man dan right after the beer show <laughs> i tried one time uncle john i tried i really did and it, it did not go well i was like slurring you know i could hide the slurs a little bit with my mustache right now but um i definitely don't want to be drunk for reading man dan and, um, you know, that's maybe the confusion people have. They come to Travel Man Dan and they see Reading Man Dan, <laughs> Drunk Man Dan or whatever. But, uh, you know, ultimately for me, it's about the, the, Dan, the Danny Soleil channel and being as creative as possible. And being able to make Celestina was a lot of fun. I'll continue doing it. And luckily, I don't know, it, be, obviously the author must have a pretty big fan base because I've already got like 1,500 views on that one. And it's really growing fast. It's really getting a lot of, um, you know, hits, if you will. People are watching it. So I'm really excited excited about that drunk man Dan <laughs> All right, speaking of drunk man Dan let's go back to it guys if you're just hopping on we're drinking greater goods uh, this one right here pulp daddy look how thick this is I mean uh, I don't know there's always that crayon in, in in the crayon box that's called maize and maize is like a little bit lighter than tan and a little bit darker than peach and that's what this looks like Almost a sandy color. Okay, very cloudy. Cheers. Woo! -hoo. Let's get naked, Greg. I, I no, I'm, I can't do it, man. I don't want the police knocking on the studio. But check it out. We're gonna go ahead. Very distinct taste. Very original flavor. It's an unfiltered IPA, and you can see by the look of it how different it is from much of the other beers that we've done. Oh man, it's really good. Okay, something about it, it's got this hoppy taste to it, but not overly bitter. Okay, it's got a citric kind of zip to it, if you will, toga, toga. But really, flavorful beer. Cousin Brian, now I know why you like this one so much. It's 8% too, so probably as we get closer to the bottom, I'm going to start slurring. The eye's going to get a little like this, turn a little bit red, and uh, we'll keep things rolling. Just trying to make people laugh. Have a good time. Put a smile on your face. Love it, Greg. Feel free as long as nobody's ever rude to anybody on this channel or gets overly uh, opinionated with their politics and their viewpoints. Make people laugh all you want, please. It's awesome. Excuse me. It's awesome. We love it here. Um, now, let's get into uh, a little bit of the stuff. Hopefully, everyone's doing okay on COVID-19. Thoughts, news. I send my blessings. Um, I know it's, uh, like I said, affected myself. Can you feel strong? It's not too grainy. You know, Cousin Brian said there was going to be some, like, pulpy kind of, like, floaters in there. I haven't tasted that yet. It's um, It's been pretty smooth, actually. It's been pretty smooth. Uh, but, hey, hopefully you guys are okay. You're getting through the COVID situation. Hopefully we won't go into a serious lockdown again, but we're taking the necessary precautions like wearing masks in public, just not to spread it, that kind of stuff. Hopefully we'll be able to find some type of vaccination for it within the next few months. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but mostly I send my blessings and hope that you guys are all doing well, doing what you can to come out of this thing better physically, spiritually, and mentally. Because um, you know, us as human beings, we're going to come out and we're going to be better from this. I, I know it's hard to imagine right now. 
Dr. Dan has a nice ring to it. Dr. Dan. <laughs> I'm a dentist, Dan. Who the hell would let me work on them? <laughs> All right, time for a root canal. <laughs> you know? uh, anyway, yeah, hope you guys are all doing good. Stay safe out there. Uh, be diligent. It's not over completely. Just do what the health officials ask you to do. Once it's over, we'll all look back on it and laugh on it. But rolling on to the next two things, I had some serious wildfires. Yes, that's what we're going to bring up. That is, that is exactly what I'm rolling into, Uncle John. Um, he, the thing is with the wildfires is most of them are a little bit north of Los Angeles. Uh, there is like 23 huge ones um, up in Northern California, around more around San Francisco, which is such a shame because if you know anything about the geography of California, that's where all the giant redwood trees are. And when those suckers die, they're done, you know what I mean? Like it takes hundreds and hundreds of years for them to grow, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of feet. So it's really sad to watch all this stuff burn. Um, not to mention if you've ever been into, a, uh, been around a California wildfire, like I was around uh, the one just about a few miles from Lake Hughes on Friday and <clears throat> the whole sky turns orange. Uh, I know they're amazing. They're so amazing. If you ever get a chance, Go to Yosemite, spend time around the Sierra Nevadas, and like then go into the Redwoods. I know it's, it's unbelievable, and unfortunately a lot of them are getting burned. But the problem is, then what happens is the gusts of wind, they, they, they change direction, and they blow all those giant ambers or whatever, and they land on these neighborhoods, and then one, two, three, four houses, and before you know it, 150 homes blow up. You know, like last year in Ventura County, which is just north of Los Angeles, maybe about 25 minutes from my house. But yeah, you get this like orange hue and you can uh, sometimes like last year, there was a, a fire right down the street from me down in what's called Sepulveda. Man, it's probably the one you've seen from Malibu and uh, you've probably seen it all over the news. And you literally wake up and it looks like snow and like ashes are just falling from the sky. They cover your car. Um, yeah, so... You know, for the most part, people can go ahead and stay safe. Unfortunately, if it runs into the danger of their home, they may lose everything they can, or they might lose everything they have. And, uh, you know, obviously the elderly, right? Uh, so they're strongly affected once again. It's almost three out of a thousand. Uh, they are all my, uh, well, yeah, see, almost 3,600 year old trees are just getting, they're just getting burned up in those fires and I think statewide in California there's over a hundred wildfires going right now so it's a shame it's something we go through every year hopefully they'll be able to go ahead and control it and it won't be a, a bad year unfortunately it's happening sooner than usually because usually it starts in like September it's considered what's called the Santa Ana winds and it's the winds that come over the mountains from the valley and from the um other side of the desert and they pick up and they swirl and you know all it takes is one little power transistor to blow over and, and spark or a fire that somebody left out whether they're camping and catches fire on some some brush on the ground and then the forest starts up and once it's going man it, it's you know I was uh, about a hundred feet from a fire two years ago that started at Griffith Park and I never seen a fire start so quick it was literally the size of a garbage can it's about a hundred yards from me and it just spread and caught onto other trees. And within 10 minutes, I'm not kidding, I have a video of it somewhere. Within 10 minutes, the entire forest part right below the Hollywood sign was on fire. There was thousands of people at the observatory. The cars were being evacuated and they were blowing up because of the heat. And then they were catching the ambers and the cars were blowing up. It was, it was nuts, man. Just thousands of people leaving the museum, running for cover. Um, yeah, the fire engines then trying to get up there. So, yeah, it's 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 been a mess. Most bushfires in Australia are said to be set by people. Yeah, you know what? That's that's another thing. It's like, you know, California unfortunately has a lot of homeless, like a lot of homeless. Uh, here in Los Angeles, oh, the census last year was over seventy thousand that they counted on one night. So probably close to a hundred thousand now with COVID they're saying maybe a hundred and fifty thousand homeless people and you know when you're 
poor, poor, like that, and you're hungry, and you're angry, and you're, you know, pissed off at the system, it's not hard to go into these forests and just start fires, and they do all the time. So sadly, that is definitely something that goes on here in the state of California as well. Anyway, let's go ahead, let's roll on, let's talk about the next thing, and um, let's get back into this greater good beer. Ocala Forest, yeah, that's down in Florida, isn't it? This is what we're drinking if you're just hopping on the G, the Greater Good Pulp Daddy. And look at it, okay? When you think pulp, you think orange juice. You think, like like Brian said, little floaters floating around. And if you can see it, it, it kind of looks like sand. It kind of looks like a cereal grain, unfiltered, malted, kind of delicious brew here. Really nice. Got the IPA tornado going on, and it is delicious, man. Uh, it's it's something I can't explain. It's not overly hoppy. It's got a real nice flavor to it, almost like you're eating it, and uh, really refreshing. And it's got the thing I like about it is it's strong. It's at eight percent. So if you're gonna have three of them, you're definitely gonna start to feel it. So uh, man. Really exciting, good beer. Thanks again, Cousin Brian, for sending it over. Now I want to talk about, well, we went into get a spoon. Yeah, that's it. That's, right. that's what I feel like. it. How's that Budweiser doing? Hey, guys, let me know. What are you drinking right now? You having a drink? You having some beers? Let me know down in the comments below what you're drinking. I'd love to hear from it. And if you ever have any suggestions, go ahead after the video and let me know what you think I should drink. I'd love to try them out. But now I want to talk about something that happened to me that I'm not too happy about. I finally, I think I fixed it. Guys, we had a meltdown, a shutdown, a Trojan, a virus got into my computer. Oh man, what a ball buster that was. He liked the Budweiser. Wow. Hey, first of all, is, is Pops here? Dad, are you, are you here? I wonder if my Pops or my, my brother is here. But oh man, I had a Trojan virus horse, whatever the heck you want to call it. And I got a lot of stuff on my computer because the computer I built is like this powerhouse for editing. And uh, it's it, nice, drinking a little wine, a little vino, Jens, yeah. And uh, I had a problem, it, it wouldn't let me load up any website. It was dropping me from the internet. Oh, it was just a tremendous headache. So I literally pulled everything off that I needed and I rebooted the system took a long time I think altogether about six hours to go ahead looks like we're up and running what do you got Stel? what do you got Ellie Emily who is Emily we got somebody new yes you got a little Stella action <coughs> nice welcome to the show Emily all right I think you are new here guys let's give her the weekly beer and video review hello Emily all right good to have you here but man, I'll tell you what, rebooting your system, uh, that is crazy. And you know what's even nuts about it? I don't know, if you guys are getting responses from me right now, from like videos that you commented on a year ago, I know, I know, I, people tell me, I, I like PC because it's compatible, it's easy, it's what I learned on. See, Emily, look at all the love for you. We're a whole big family, we're a bunch of fun guys that, and girls now that meet every... Uh, <laughs> every Sunday so thanks for hopping on and joining us but uh, I got a shitload of comments over a hundred and forty comments that I never saw before so if you what the heck is that free Grimbraden double ambery that sounds like some kind of exotic European thing with a cork on it for beer awesome <laughs> yeah so I, I, if you're getting a response, uh, I, I, I'm answering back a comment from a year ago. It's just because I never knew it was there. And when I rebooted the system under the comment section of my YouTube uh, analytics, about 142 comments popped up. So I'm going through and I'm answering them all. Some of them are great, man. Some of them are like, you know, a lot of hate. You know, not a lot. I, I get for every 20 people that like me, there's one that <laughs> feels the need to tell me to F you. <laughs> but uh, but that's the game. That's why we love it. Um, because people like yourselves who are watching it, who enjoy the content, make it so much fun. But hey, guys, if you're just hopping on, we got Emily here. She is new. This is what we're drinking. This little sandy creation. Look at this thing, man. It's holding up really well. It reminds me of something. 
Who is that? <laughs> Goes with the territory. Yeah, tough. That's it, man. Goes with the territory. If you're going to play the game. Uh... Oh, we got Pops is on. Hey, what's up, all my family over in Niagara Falls? Pops is at Dolo's house. Thank you. Cheers. Guys, look at this. This is what we're drinking. Pulp Daddy from Greater Good. Cousin Brian sent it. It is a maize flavor. Delicious, a bit bitter, not overpoweringly, a little bit of citric sweetness to it, but overall a delicious beer. Man, I think unfiltered is the way to go. <laughs> that is really good. All right, moving right along. Now I'm going to talk about tonight's video. The Micro Monday video is going to be really fun. It'll be exciting. Jens, you probably know what I can't believe. The grain don't drop. Yeah, I know. It's nuts. It just sits there and flows around in like a little tornado. And it's got the same color from when I first poured this beer out of the can. It's got the same exact color. It's just, it's glorious. I think unfiltered might be the way to go. But hey, we're talking about videos that are coming out next week. That's why I want to talk about the next week's video. Tomorrow's video is me when I was working on a Chinese TV show. They flew me over there. They brought me to Beijing. I filmed a few days in Beijing. Then they shucked me off to some weird, crazy little small town. If you saw last week's video, it was me touring the supermarket in Shunyi, which is a tiny podong little town. Pops knows what I'm talking about. You get to these little towns in China. Oh boy, they're a doozy. But, um, but this is a tour of the hotel room I stayed in. <laughs> and if you, got, if you want to see something fun, you got to check out tomorrow's video. It's the Micro Monday, so it'll be short. It'll be around three to four minutes. Really quick little quick hitter. Um, the full episode's always down in the description. But uh, if you've never seen a motel in China or a hotel, they're pretty interesting. There's a lot. Yeah, it is pretty cool, man. It's like... You know, for me, I, I don't care. I will go anywhere. Um, Chinese not. Yeah, we'll go. I'll speak Chinese later to you. But yeah, it's really fun. You know, when I get on a movie of any magnitude, a TV show, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm very grateful. I don't care. I will literally sleep in a tent and um, outside. And uh, well, in China, the conditions aren't as good as they are here. Usually, you know, when you're get booked on a show here, aside from being like an indie or like some kind of like student funded thing, you're usually put in something at least the double tree or motel six level. So we all know, says the Norwegian, <laughs> the Norwegian spent time in China as well. That's what's crazy. Jen's also spent two years in China. So we, we go back and forth a lot and we talk a lot of funny Chinese stories. But um, but yeah, check that video out. Um, it's really fun. It's just a, it's a, just a nice look at what, uh, what really is going on. Because, you know, it's very easy for me to go ahead and post a picture of me on set and my cool outfit and, you know, doing something, I don't know, something cool from the movie and everything looks great. Slap a couple filters on it, think of something catchy to say, and boom, look at me. I'm the actor guy over in the other side of the world. That is true, okay? That is going on. That part I love. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's also another side to that, and that side is staying in low, shitty house. What up? Brian Castle's in the house, hometown. Yes, North Ender. No, so what I was saying is, aside from all that pictures on Facebook and that home, I know we're rolling, don't worry. All that good stuff. Um, you're gonna see, you're gonna see stuff like the hotel that comes up tomorrow's episode. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead. I, thank you, Tenacious Freak. I got it going for your side of the video from child, Jurel Journey, Shane, the Beijing. I know. It, it, it got like it's like 70,000 views I got lucky on that one um, but anyway this is what we're drinking this one's for my homie Brian Castle BC what's up we are drinking greater good unfiltered pulp daddy delicious IPA from Worcester Massachusetts oh man 
smooth, real nice, okay? It's a juicy, hazy New England IPA, okay? That's a good way to put it, okay? It is juicy. And when I mean juicy, I mean it tastes like juice. It tastes like grapefruit juice. And I love the taste of the unfiltered beer. I love the look of the unfiltered beer. You know when someone's drinking a stout and it's like a black beer? And they feel like, well, I don't want to say more macho, but I know they feel, hey, look at me, I'm drinking black beer. I'm strong. I'm drinking the German stuff. And, you know, it's kind of like that. Like, you feel like, yeah, I'm drinking unfiltered, kind of juicy, high, you know, IPA. Really good stuff. Great beer company. We got 10 more beers. There is a few more from the Greater Good Imperial Brewing Company, but uh, really nice. The good thing is, is 8%. And, um, well, this came from Cousin Brian. It is non-pasteurized, unfiltered, delicious. I got to go ahead and give it a nice, good score of a 9. That's right, a 9. I really liked it. I love the juiciness in it. I love the flavor of it. I love the unfilteredness. I love the strength of it. Really delicious beer. And uh, if you get a chance to check out Pulp Daddy, make sure you can. Uh, it should be available in most like um, beer stores that are, uh, well, I don't want to say higher end, but have more craft beers to them. So thank you so much, Cousin Brian, for that one. And then nine must be good. That's right. Looking for an unfiltered to next week's show. Try to find this one. You might be able to find it in some type of international market. We've only had one beer hit at Perfect 10, and that was Labatt Blue. And that was more on a Homer thing, right? That was kind of what I grew up with. And, uh, and yeah. Well, moving on, before I get to uh, the next beer, we are going to go ahead, Greater Good. Yeah, it's called Greater Good. I'll go ahead and put down in the description after this video is over all the information. You can check it out in the brewery. Maybe there's a place in Copenhagen where you can buy it. Um, I think there's a, there's a really cool um, place called uh, Beer Advocate, and they, want, they go ahead and they show off uh, where you can buy certain beers from around the world. All right, now... Now it's time to get into the second beer from Cousin Brian. And this one I'm even more excited about because in terms of micro brews, craft brews, whatever you want to call it, this probably is my favorite style of beer. And I'm talking about the Pale Ale, okay? It's just a little bit less bitter than the IPA, but still packs a really good punch. And that's why today we're bringing in another one of Cousin Brian's Sweet Can Treats sent from Boston. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen, from Cisco Brewers, established in Nantucket, 1995, the year I graduated from Kenmore West. We're talking about the Whale's Tail Pale Ale. Check it out. This is awesome. Look at this. I love all the cartoony. It kind of looks like early graphics from the Commodore 64, if you will, um, of the early, early computer day graphics. And boy, this one looks good. It is um, a Pale Ale from Nantucket. Now, the alcohol percentage is not as strong. It's only registered at 5.6. But it's probably better that we don't back-to-back -back something that's 8%. Because we don't want to see Travel Man Dan. All of a sudden, the video will look like this. And that's really not that aesthetic, right? That's really hard to watch when you're looking at it. I know it seems funny and you might like it now, but you know, and then you're like, so we're gonna stick to the 5.6. We're gonna drop it down a lot, okay? The Pal Al, here comes 3D Print Lady. Yeah, that, isn't this cool? I like this Tenacious Freak. Isn't that a cool label? It's very simple, the whale's tail, 3D. Let's go ahead and crack this can. We'll take a little waft and I'll pour it into the cup. Let's see what the whale tail, tail of the L. Put that seatbelt on. <laughs> Why not? All right, here we go. All right. Can't really smell anything. <laughs> Looks like I got to snort it. <laughs> it's not that kind of show. All right. <clears throat> All right. Doesn't really have a really strong taste to it or a strong aroma, much like the IPAs. But that's okay. Let's go ahead, pour it in. I cleaned out the glass. Let's get a good look at it. Right away, I can see that it's a little bit darker, okay? More like a copper color, more of an amber flavor, if you will. This is not a red beer. This is a pale ale, okay? 
And notice the difference than the last beer. The last beer was unfiltered, right? So this pale ale, okay, ooh, man, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That right there has got me all over it. Hi, what are you doing for the next 30 or 40 years? <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I was slipping. You don't have a girlfriend and uh, or a wife, and I'm always looking, and I think I may have found her. Look at the whale's tail pal owl all right dark enough where i can't see you okay really nice orange color you got a little bit of funnel it's not as deep a funnel as the ipa hey <laughs> man greg z this beer looks amazing i can't wait to taste it it's pal it looks good it's from nantucket and let's go ahead and give it a suck it Ooh, man. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's like, after drinking the unfiltered and then going to this, boy, what a difference. This one, super clean, super refreshing. It's like somebody taking uh, the eight pack of ice cube trays and just throwing them down your throat. It's so clean and cold and you can taste that filterness as opposed to the unfilteredness like the last beer. Guys, if you're just joining us, this is what we're drinking, the Whale's Tail Pale Ale. And it is awesome. It's from Cisco Breweries. It was sent to me by Cousin Brian. Really delicious, easy, crisp, clean. Look at that. Look at the head on that. We can see the carbonation, okay? Definitely got some complexity in it. Okay, I don't taste as much citric or bitterness as the last beer. I taste more of refreshing and clean and just a nice overall beer taste. Really nice. Really looking forward to sucking you down. All right. Now, let's get to one of my favorite segments, and that is show and tell. All right. Show and tell is a lot of fun. This is why I go ahead and show you something and tell you about it. So, let me tell you about it, and it is coming up. I was given this book by a friend, um, by a person, a, a child's author, and she had given me this really cool book set. And uh, she, I was doing a job for her husband. I work in construction, and I was talking to her, his wife, and I said, so what do you do? And she told me, hey, I do uh, uh, children's books. I'm a children's author. I was like, really? Well, I'm reading Man Dan, you know? I read books on YouTube to kids. So she couldn't believe it. She was excited about it. And she go ahead and she gave me her books. And these are her books. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you Valentino the Love Bunny. Check out these books. She gave me three epic books. Her name is Margarita Fairbanks. And uh, they are all really, really nicely done. I'm going to go ahead. I want to find something and show something to you. Uh really well done let me open this one up and this is valentino the love bunny check these books out i mean they're a more of a long read and we're going to go ahead and make some changes to reading man dan for these episodes but look at the brilliant art on this thing really nice story just teaches kids about love and about uh, being friendly and just going out and exploring the world and margarita herself is a gem yeah, these, these things are like full-on hardcover, like really great. And she gave them to me to go ahead and make these videos. And not only did she give me these, but she also gave me, ready for this? Greg Z, are you ready? Uncle John, BC, Valentino. Check it out, guys. <laughs> this is Valentino the Love Bunny, all right? Gave me this rabbit, this furry, fuzzy little friend. That I can stroke when I'm reading. Okay, this is Valentino. Say hello. You like some beers? We'll go ahead and give him a sip of the Wow's Tail. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty cool. That is what I'm showing and telling. This is a fun stuff. Hey, guys, it's three o'clock. Yes, guess who it is? Tomer. Hey, Tomer, how you doing? You are live on the weekly beer and video review show. How's it going, man? Hey, what's that? 
This is Travel Man Dan. How can I help you? You are on the weekly beer and video review show. Polish, macaroni, and hummus. <laughs> macaroni and hummus. What would you like to say? Did you go surfing today? Well, I'm going surfing now. All right. Well, you are live. Tomer Oz, surf some dude. I'll call you later. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye. Bye. We love it when somebody calls in live. I would definitely love if you're interested. So the tease on Instagram, the toy bunny made no sense. <laughs> no, it made all the sense. Here he is. This is Valentino. Valentino will be read on Reading Man Dan. Guys, that is Tomer. If you ever get a chance to call in live, I will always answer and say what's up on the weekly beer and video review show. Thanks for hanging with me. Shoot me down in the comments below. Let me know how you're doing. Where are you at nowadays? Are you in Norway? Are you in Belgium? Are you over in Zambia? He was in the fight video. Yes, he was. Yes, he was the director of the fight video. Uh, real quick backstory, Tomer, uh, send me a number, I'll call you. I will, Greg. I will definitely do that. Um, real quick backstory on Tomer, Aston. Tomer is an Israeli army soldier, uh, like a real army soldier that I met in China on Jackie Chan movies. And um, Tomer is a freaking badass, man. He's, um, he's done a, a lot of movies with Jackie and his team. He was Orlando Bloom's stunt coordinator, coordinator and uh, he's now living in Los Angeles. He's my very good friend. He is the one that organized our fight challenge and went ahead and produced it, directed it, uh, cut it up, edited all that good stuff. So. That's great that you noticed it. If you haven't, go ahead and follow him. Uh, he's a really good action fighter. He's a Muay Thai kickboxer and uh, really good stuff. And uh, he's on his way to the beach. He's heading surfing. I don't do that, but uh, always good. He seems to always call, and he's the 3 o'clock call. <laughs> Jonah Tech, you know, I got cool people here. All right, so guys, now let's want to hear Greg Z. Want to get weird. <laughs> you guys want Greg Z to call? <laughs> we, will, we will, we will. But first, let's get back into the pow owl. Uh, <laughs> guys, one call in a week. Let's do that, okay? You know, call in live, all right? Even if you FaceTime, that's pretty funny too. This is what we're drinking. Guys, if you haven't, this is the Whale's Tail Pow Owl. Really delicious beer sent to me by Cousin Brian. So much different, so much different than the unfiltered. It's almost like you're drinking something um, like, a, like a watery, a more a watery beer. It's really different than the last beer. It's got not a lot of complexity to it, to be honest with you. There's really not much to it. I taste a little bit of maltiness going on in there. I taste a little bit of, um, well, it's kind of like a earthy, musty flavor if you will and uh that's pretty much about it whereas the unfiltered one was like pow 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 pow, pow. It's like a blast of every sensation going on that you could the double ombre is red okay ambre all right let's have to check it out but guys now comes the the part of the show where i talk about the upcoming uh, the upcoming video and i am very excited about this it's been years since i've had this one I'm still doing Food Friday from the truck. I'm still doing the drive through and all the fast food. But everybody's familiar with this one. Strange the dark beer tastes less. I know, really weird. Um, but I think it has something to do with the filter and the unfiltered. But guys, I haven't done this in a couple years. I had soldier surgery in, in China. And I was all doped up. They kept feeding me medicine pills. I was all loopy. and you know, So food tasted a little weird to me. Well, in China, you can get McDonald's delivered to your house. So they used to deliver to me because I couldn't go anywhere. I was in a sling, you know. And I remember this one night I was eating McDonald's. I was just eating it all the time. And I bit into it and it smelled so weird. So much taste is crazy. Uh, I want to try it. And it just hit me and I was like, now I lived on the 32nd floor in Shanghai. And I was eating this McDonald's hamburger and I said, this tastes disgusting. And I just said, Phew, and I threw it out the window. Hopefully it didn't land on somebody's head. 
<laughs> Imagine you're just down there talking. Ah, uh, come on, I'm going to on the side. And boom, and a hamburger coming in the head. But that was it, man. That was it. I was done with McDonald's. After that point, I looked at myself. I said, trying to try the ginger. Uh, you guys talking Danish. Go for it. I said, never again am I going to eat McDonald's, or at least for a very long time. But now, since I've been doing these videos, since I've been doing fast food fries, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to hit up McDonald's. Okay? Now, I was going to go to the oldest McDonald's in existence, but they have a really cool museum there. And unfortunately, due to COVID, it's shut down. You can't go inside. So, we're going to hold off on that. We're still going to do McDonald's. We're going to do something off their secret menu called the Land, Sea, and Air Burger. Okay? But it'll also be the first time I revisit McDonald's in uh, about five and a half years. So, I'm really excited, really pumped up. Haven't gone back to Mickey D's in a long time. I think it, I think it's time. But I promise you, I will bring you not only the oldest McDonald's, I will also bring you the very first McDonald's in San Bernardino and the oldest one in Commerce. But on this weekend or this upcoming Food Friday will be just the regular McDonald's as we break the streak. I gotta, I gotta look at my medical records when that surgery was. Geez, I'd say it's probably. Probably about six years, maybe, you know, since, and I like fast food. I don't eat it all the time, but I try to treat myself at least twice a month to, like, fast food. And it's typically Wendy's, if I have my choice. I love Wendy's. Um, anyway, 1953, I don't know what that means. Okay, but uh, moving right along, make sure you check that out. That'll be the Food Friday show. Let's go back into the whale's tail. Thank you so much for joining me. BC is in the house. Yes, I'm so happy you're back. Never had a McRib. Is it worth it? <laughs> you're you're awesome, Jens. Well, that's debatable. I uh, I don't really like the McRib. It always reminded me of cafeteria rib sandwiches where there wasn't actually the bone in there. It was just the processed pork. So uh, it's, the first McDonald's is in San Bernardino. I'm going to the oldest one. But this video, that video will have to wait. I'm going to just a regular McDonald's now. Sometime early December, I'll go to the oldest one. But yeah, the McRib is debatable. What do you guys think? Who's had the McRib? What do you guys think? You think it's worth it? Oh, that's good. My favorite McDonald's ever sandwich was the Belgian Pal Al from Jim. Oh, I have to try that out. My favorite McDonald's creation was this thing. I'm confused. What's the difference between the oldest and the first? I, I know. I, I, I was very confused, Brian. Coming from the history teacher. Okay, so apparently the very first one is out there but it wasn't operational and then the oldest one is the one that has not stopped serving McDonald's you'd have to go to the internet to get more clarification because I was I said the same thing I was like wait a minute so the very first McDonald's is in San Bernardino and and it is what is considered the original hamburger stand that wasn't the name and it didn't switch to McDonald's until later when it became franchised. But the oldest one, I think it was in 1953, has been opened and been running under the name of McDonald's. I'm going to go ahead and put it all in the video. I will go ahead and do all the proper, give it a proper, uh, you know, episode. But um, I'm looking forward to that. But this week's Food Friday will just be to try out one of their secret menu items. But who in Buffalo from the 90s remembers the Cornelius Bennett Sack Big Mac. Okay, that was my favorite sandwich. That's what I said, 1953. Yeah, see, now, I, now I'm getting you. The Cornelius, don't go to MACD, only when I'm in USA. Okay. I, I Yeah, you guys have, uh, oh, what's the one in Denmark that I went to? It was awesome. I, I forget the fast food place I went to. The Max. Did you ever go to the Max, Drunatic? That was your fast food restaurant. But the, who remembers the Corn, Cornelius? <laughs> yes, it was the Cornelius Burger 
Big Mac, and it was a Big Mac with bacon on it. And that was probably like early to mid 90s when uh, Cornelius Bennett and the Bills were kicking everybody's ass. That was my favorite McDonald's sandwich. Oh, it was so good. And the one on Sheridan Drive and uh, Delaware had it. And the Flutie Flakes, yes. <laughs> Max Burger is not bad. We got it in Norway and Sweden. I think it's from Sweden, right? I think uh, in Scandinavia, Max Burger is king, right? It's like it's from Sweden. It's in Oslo, and uh, it's it's even reached parts of uh, Denmark that I was in. I know it was in Copenhagen, but really good. I ate there. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Yeah, see Sweden. And um, one of the things I liked about them is they did serve me mayonnaise with fries. That was pretty cool. Tried it in Sweden. Yeah, the one that I tried is down in in, in, um, in the big square right there. Tenacious Freak. I've only been here in Ferry King when I was a teenager. Oh, Junitech. You got to get on the fast food joints, man. All right, when you get over to the USA, if you ever make it to Los Angeles, hit me up, dude. We'll go on a fast food frenzy. Oh, man. So many good places. That's going to be the, the funny thing is once things start opening up again, I'm going into restaurants again. Now, we're not going to be doing so much fast food. Anyway, let's speed things up. Now, it's one of our favorite times. What would you rather? Rather this, rather that. What would you rather? Yeah, here we go. What would you rather, guys? Listen, this part is a lot of fun. This part is good for me and it's good for you. I'll tell you my answers, but leave your answers after the show is over, okay? Once this show is completely over, put it down in the comments below. It'll go ahead and give me a chance to respond. And I hope to hear some good answers. But... Good answers, bad answers, there is none. This is what would you rather. And here they come. Okay, what would you rather? I got a ticket for you. Here you go. This ticket is for you. This ticket, you can either go to Egypt or to Israel. Where are you going? Huh? I don't know. What you going to do? Not looking for it. <laughs> Aston. Okay, where are you going? You're going to go to Egypt? You're going to go to Israel? Now, both I'm definitely going to go see. I want to see the pyramids. I want to ride a camel. I want to do falconing. Choo, meow, meow. And the falcon flies around and lands back on your arm. I'd love to do that with some bedrins out in Egypt. But for me, I really want to see Israel. I want to go over there. I want to see the diverse cultures within this small little country. I want to go ahead and eat some hummus and some shashuka. I want to go and enjoy the coast at Tel Aviv. I want to swim in the water. I want to go to Tomer's house. I want to enjoy Israel. So that's my guess. Let me know after the video where you want to see or what would you rather. Number two, what, what would you rather? I'm giving you a drink. What's it going to be? Iced tea? Sweetened on. That's okay. It's just iced tea or lemonade. You're an iced tea guy, you're a lemonade guy. Here you go. All right. For me, if you've watched any of my fast food shows, you know I'm an iced tea drinker. So I definitely would take an unsweetened iced tea all the way, every day. Really enjoy it. And don't come to me after the comments and say, oh, I'll take them both. I want an Arnold Palmer. No smart asses allowed. <laughs> All right, here's what we're drinking. If you're just hopping on the show, we are halfway into What Would You Rather. I just want to go ahead and send shouts out to Brian, my cousin, for sending me the Wells Tail Pal Al. Yeah, I think so, man. It's just a, re it's got the most refreshing flavor. It doesn't have that really malty taste to it when it comes to like a lager. It's just clean, smooth, and easy. I really like the Pal Al's. Number three. What would you rather? Okay, you're at a party. You show up. You're all, it's a summertime party. You're having fun. Are you going to play a little cornhole? <whistles> if you don't know what cornhole is, Arnold Palmer, <laughs> I don't know. A little cornhole is where you throw those sandbags into that little wooden thing. You try to get them in the hole. I like, uh, yeah. So, are you playing cornhole or are you going to be a little more active? And play a little badminton, okay? Pew, pew, pew. Loganberry. Are you playing badminton? Or are you playing cornhole? What would you rather? For me, not really into the whole cornhole thing. No people love it. I've seen it on ESPN. I like a traditional horseshoes. Maybe we'll go to Thurston and play. But for me, it's badminton. Absolutely love it. Love to play badminton. When I was in China... 
man, these people play badminton, like seriously, like they're going to the Olympics. You know, for me, it was mostly just going ahead and playing badminton out in Canada at my neighbor Harry's cottage. But boy, I'll tell you, you go to China, that is some really crazy stuff out there. They have like huge arenas with a hundred different badminton courts. And for me, I want to run around. I want to sweat a little bit. For me, it's a little more physical. I'm definitely playing badminton or cornhole. What would you rather? The next, next one. <laughs> this one's a little good. What would you rather? Corny, corny. <laughs> wow, Greg Z, you're getting a little loose over there, I think. <laughs> you really like that cornhole. <laughs> All right, the next one. What would you rather? Would you rather climb a ladder 200 feet okay you, that thing is like you know you know you're you're good up until about 20 feet and then all of a sudden 200 feet imagine 200 feet okay it's pretty high <laughs> it's pretty high up right okay 200 feet you're climbing a ladder or are you crawling in a little tunnel all right underground 200 feet what would you rather? You're gonna go ahead and climb that ladder? Are you scared of heights? Or are you gonna go through the tunnel? And uh, well, are you claustrophobic? For me, I'm taking the tunnel, man. Even though both of them sound like hell, I am taking the tunnel. I don't think I could get more than 25 feet off that ladder. And I'm not talking like a big sturdy ladder. I'm talking about an old wooden frame ladder and you gotta climb it. So what would you rather? Let me know down in the comments after the show. Man, that's some scary stuff. Both of them really bring out the frightening and uh, the, you know, the fear of what we have inside. But even crawling through that little tunnel, oh my gosh, after you're about 50 feet in and you know you got, you know, a lot more to go. All right, now, <laughs> you know what time it is. Aston, Jen's Tenacious Freak, Aquanuts, Uncle John, BC, Pops, if you're there, Dodo, the rest of the family, Greg Z. What would you rather? Here comes the disgusting one. Okay, you're in a straight line, right? And here's what you got to do. You got to walk down this straight line, right? And down this straight line is 50 hands on both sides. So, a person... A person, a person, a person, a person, person. You get it. So it's like 50 hands and their fingers are like this. Just enough room. You walk by and it swipes you, right? It just swipes you. And as you get swiped from one person, you get swiped in the next and then in the next. And it's 50 people in a row that you're getting swiped, right? Okay. And on those fingertips, on those little fingertips is nothing but armpit juice. Okay, armpit juice from 50 strangers, and you gotta walk through it, and it's just hitting you. Some of them are going in your nose, some of them are poking you in the eye, leaving it over here, it's over here, and it's just boom. Okay, then, or what would you rather? <laughs> Not naked. Okay, they're it's just hands, and you just have to walk through them. Or, all right, now, mind you, fingernails too. So sometimes you walk in, you're getting cut, and then you're also getting armpit, and then people, maybe this guy's been playing some hoops or something, and he's got really sweaty pits. Or, now we're talking feet, okay? Imagine these are feet. So 50 feet with toes, and you have to walk through it, and all on the toes, on the tips of the toes, is nothing but sweaty toe fungus and juices from toes okay just sweating all over maybe they just ran a marathon and they got a couple of, of uh, toenails hanging off here and there and you gotta walk through it one two three and as you walk through you gotta walk it and just you're on like a conveyor belt and you're like this and it's just and it's just hitting you in the face what would you rather would you rather the things <laughs> Good see that is, I don't know that. <laughs> really? There's got to be juice. <laughs> yeah. Ask, ask them, I love that guy. I know. I'm in quarantine. I got I yeah, I, I keep my personal life out of this, but hey. <laughs> That's great. So what are you doing, guys? Let me know. For me personally, I'm taking the fingers. 
It's better than the toes, and that's what I'm having. So let me know after the show is over what you would rather. I'd love to hear from you. This is what we're drinking, the Whale's Tail Pow Pow, and we're going to hop right into this day in history. Smooth. Really smooth. Really smooth. All right, in this day in history, I don't consider myself a history professor. I'm just a history guy who, I'm just a guy who likes history. <laughs> I would have cut that out. See how YouTube works? You can, or not just YouTube, any show. You just cut it out. But when you're drinking, it's a little bit harder. I can make somebody smile and laugh. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I always implement that weird, disgusting number five. But this day in history. On August 23rd, 1305, William Wallace, the Scottish Patriot, the guy that was, well, the movie Braveheart was named after, was unfortunately executed for high treason by Edward I. Man, damn. William Wallace, executed in 1305 on today's day. So... If you're not doing anything tonight, I suggest maybe watching a little Braveheart. Yeah. All right, moving right along. On this day in history, on August 23rd, 1839, after he was drawn and quartered. Oh, was he really? Oh, my gosh. Ah, that is like my worst. Drawn and quartered is like where you're hanging like this and they pull you apart. And Oh, my gosh. Was that Cousin Brian? Was that how he was done? Now, mind you, Cousin Brian not only is an awesome dude who sends beer to his cousin, but he is also a real history buff, history teacher. Okay? Wow. All right. On 1839, on this day in history, the British capture Hong Kong from China. Okay? So, from 1839 until 1999, it was pretty much... A British, I don't know if you say colony, but it was um, it was under British rule. And that's a lot of times what you see on the news is the Hong Kong people are fighting with the Chinese because they actually liked the way that the British structured. They're pulling me like that. And, well, I can't speak for all Hong Kong people, so I don't know that. Scalping is the worst. Look it up. Oh, my gosh. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to know about any torture. Please. It's a beer show. But, yeah. In this day in history, in 1839, the British captured Hong Kong from China. All right? And, well, the next thing, on this day in history, on August 23rd, 1873, this one is for you, Aston. The Albert Bridge crossing the Thames River in London, England, was constructed. It opened. Okay, you can now walk across the Thames. Let's go. Or you take your horse and buggy. Are naked while we're doing No, we're not. We're cross Imagine crossing a bridge on a horse. But on this day in history, in 1873, the Albert Bridge. Now, there was a lot of reconstruction done to the Albert Bridge, and it looks much different than it did in 1873. But on this day in history was when it first opened up, and I've never crossed the Thames, but I can't wait, and I hope to see it one day on this day in history. On this day in history, in 2008, in Beijing, at the Wukong Stadium in Beijing, South Korea, South Korea, defeats Cuba in the gold medal of baseball. This day in history, we always bring in a baseball. And congratulations to the South Koreans. On this day in history, they beat Cuba. Cuba is the powerhouse in baseball. South Korea wasn't even supposed to medal. And they beat them. And not only did they beat them, they went through the, all the rounds of the Olympics. All of it. All the rounds with a 9-0 and record. But how awesome is that? Congratulations on this day in history. South Korea, you won the gold medal in baseball. Yes. All right, on this day in history. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina forms over the Bahamas. In 2005, later to go on and to absolutely decimate the city of New Orleans, parts of Georgia, parts of Florida, parts of Texas, 
that whole golf. You guys all remember all those images. I, I can remember vividly just watching people being rescued on the Superdome. And for a lot of people, that changed the trajectory of their life, especially those people that lived in New Orleans. So on this day in history, in 2005, they got sold. <laughs> nice, BC. Yeah, they, um, Katrina started forming. All right. On 2007, on this day in history, okay, Chris Messiah first invented and used a tweet with the hashtag on it. Woo! Hashtag this. Hashtag just a kid form. Ken Moore. Hashtag this. Hashtag that. Oh, yeah. So on this day in history, in 2007, the hashtag was born. But I was drunk. Doesn't surprise me, Greg Z. That's awesome. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this session, this little segment of this day in history. Like I said before, I am not a history professional i'm not a history professor i just like to go ahead and find out some stuff share it with you i have a friend that lost everything katrina <clears throat> yeah it's um it's sad when you when you meet people like this and it's like moroccan food right that's a great idea i think i will try out moroccan food that is um that is a that is you know like we were talking about earlier what was the first word number the first word number. Oh, 1935, William Wallace was executed. Um, yeah, and he was, a, obviously, if you've ever seen Braveheart. But yeah, as we talked about earlier about the fires and how it can decimate lives. Was there four months and I did miss, I was there. <laughs> Greg Z, I'm starting to see a, a familiarity with you and alcohol. <laughs> Awesome, Greg. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, now I want to bring on the segment called What Are You Reading? What Are You Watching? I'm going to make it quick. I'm going to make it a little bit faster. What are you reading? I am, you know, reading the same stuff as I was before. It is getting me through. I don't want to brag, but I was in uh, Ken West. <laughs> uh, BC, Ken West, Ath Ken West Athlete of 1992. BC was an awesome cross country. I think it means what was the first hashtag? Oh, the first hashtag. I'm sorry. What was first used in a tweet? Um, I don't. It doesn't. Yeah, that's a good question. Chris Messina hashtag. It doesn't say. I did. I, I didn't do proper research. Bust it. Lock me up. I'm sorry, but I don't know. I, I, I was just reading it, and I, I really wasn't sure what it was. Um, that's a good thing that we got our good phone here. Let's see if we can't find it. I am going to find out for you right now. All right, the first ever hashtag by Chris Messina back in 2007 was Bar Camp. Okay? All right, and it was uh it was for open source software. Bar Camp. Hashtag Bar Camp. That was the first ever on this day in history. But we're talking about now what are you reading? What are you watching? Okay, what am I reading? Still reading the same stuff. Okay? Didn't really change much because it's a huge uh, project that I'm working on. It's called Don Quixote. You may have heard of it. It's incredibly hard. I'm not even a slither into the book. It's really like Shakespearean language, but of the Latin American culture. And so it's really tough translated to read. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll make my way through it. I was originally projecting to get it done by August. Now I'm saying by the end of the year. Right? Oh my God, let me tell you, there was this Joel's witness there. They came over and I had them help with the reading. Uh, Greg, I missed the rest of that, but what am I watching? Guys, I've started a new show. I don't know if you've ever seen the show with Jason Bateman and Laura Linney and Julia Garner. It's called Ozark. I haven't seen it. It came out in 2017. People love it. Let me know down in the comments below if you've seen it. I'd love to hear about it. I don't care about the spoilers. I'm really pumped about it. I love Jason Bateman as an actor. Uh, heard it's got a you know, great show. People enjoy it. 
Let me know what you're watching or what you're reading. I'd love to get some suggestions, some recommendations. And well, that's it for what are you reading, what are you watching. I'm just hopping on with the show. We're going quite long today, and that's okay. We're having a fun time. Thanks for hanging with us. This is what we're drinking, the Whale's Tail Pal Al. Ozark's pretty good. I'm going to check it out. It's a delicious Pal Al. I'm going to finish this swig and go ahead and give you a score. Much different than the unfiltered, raw kind of flavored beer that I was drinking before. Really like it. I love how it's clean. It's, it, it doesn't bring any new flavors to me. Hoops new animation cartoon on next. I know that one. I, I saw it. I'll check it out. Doesn't bring any new outstanding flavors to my palate. Doesn't hit me with something that I haven't tried before. Just a really nice good beer and that's why I'm going to give it a good score. I'm going to give it a quality score of an 8.5. Would I drink it again? Hell yeah. The only thing that I would like about it is well nothing. It's perfect actually. Now I don't give it a 10 because I probably couldn't get through 10 of them but really good. First day drinking off of Cousin Brian's secret stash that he sent to me. Thank you so much. The Greater Good Pulp Daddy was an unfiltered IPA, which was super strong and was a flavorful, unbelievable beer. And then the Whale's Tail, a perfect uh, pal Al, brought to you from Nantucket Breweries. And I definitely suggest if you see these two beers, to try them out for yourself. You're going to enjoy it. Now I want to close out the show with the with the quote of the week. And the quote of the week comes from us from a lady named Karen Lamb. Do I have a fan mailbox? I, 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 I do actually, yeah. <laughs> if you want to send me stuff, uh, you can go ahead and DM me on Instagram and I'll tell you where to send it. I'm putting all that stuff together. Um, it's really weird. As I've started, I never knew I needed this kind of stuff. But I'm growing and people are hitting me up a lot more. And uh, we're going to be getting Super Chat. And uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of Patreon and fan mail. And uh, really, I can't say thank you enough. I'm very humbled by you guys that come up and your show here um, each and every week. Thank you, Jonatech. I really, coming from you from Denmark, I love the Danish people. And um, yeah, it, it really means a lot to me. As you know, uh, Brian's my cousin and he's having these beers and I'm always going to love them. But, uh, you know, I got these amazing beer mugs sent to me by Tenacious Freak and Aqua Nuts and uh, I, I won't forget it. So thank you so much. As I continue to grow, I am very appreciative and send out gratitude to you guys. That's why I want to close out this quote with Karen Lamb. And she said, on a year from now, you may wish you had started. Okay, think about that. A year from now, you may wish you have started today. Okay, that's what she said. And now think about that. She said, if you were to take today, and let's say you start today, a year from now, we're going to go now to August 23rd, 2001. Whatever. Let's send them something and share a shipping fee. Ah, uh, dude, you guys. <laughs> A year from now, whatever it is, I, I, I don't know what your interests are. Now, it could be something where you want to learn how to work on certain cars and being a mechanic. It could be something where you want to learn a language. I want to learn Portuguese. I want to learn Italian. It could be something where you want to build puzzles and shellac them and glue them together and sell them out of flea market. I don't know. Uh, it could be something cooking or running if you start today start today right now or depending on what time it is start tomorrow a year from now think about it think about your growth think about your process my internet will be you mom think about the <laughs> the internet and and, and Greg Greg see I don't know what you're saying think about a year from now the progression that you have made. And if you give it, let's say you do language, right? 
and you start today and you start learning Korean every day for one hour, one hour of your day, I'm sure you can find where you sit down and you give your guidance and you give your attention, your focus, and you start to learn Korean. <laughs> A year from now, on the August 23rd, I guarantee you're probably pretty good at Korean. Cooking. Let's say that, uh, let's say that you, um, all of a sudden you want, uh, Tenacious Freak. If you sent my dad something from Carlsberg, he'd probably, man, dude, that, that's, I'm getting the chilies. <laughs> but listen, if you started working on a secret cupcake or a donut and with a perfect frosting and inside the filling was unbelievable, a year later, if you just put an hour of time into it, think of being think about where you would be. So I tell you this quote one more time. A year from now, you may wish you have started today. Don't hold back whatever you're thinking about doing, whatever you've always wanted to do it, whatever you have going on in your life, you can still figure that one out. You can still get it in. Thank you, Tenacious Tariq. You can still sneak whatever it is that you desire. Just work at it a little bit and think about from a year from now. Um, a year and like eight months ago, I had nothing, no, nothing, not one video on YouTube. I started doing it. Now, look, at I've gotten better. I got a long way to go, but I've gotten better. And that's what you'll do. You may have a long way to go, but you'll get better in one year. And you'll wish you have started. So start today. I encourage you. It is possible. You can do it. Find out what it is that you want to do, no matter what it is. Doesn't have to be what they like. Doesn't have to be what they like. Doesn't have to be what anybody likes. It's what you like. Start today. Start tomorrow. Don't stop. Give a little bit. Put a little effort into it each and every day for the next year. And a year later, you're going to be better. You're going to be awesome. Hey, Richie. Richie D. Christina's here. Yes. All right. Come on. Guys, I want to tell you real quick. Richie D. Christina, if you haven't seen him, hop on over to my video of Mooney's Chicken Wings. He's the chef that cooked up all those awesome Chevetta's wings. Um, and my favorite wings, I know, it's crazy. My favorite wings are the Mooney's Gold. Those friggin' things are awesome, Rich. I'll be back in December. I'm definitely going to come by. Thank you for popping up in the video. Say hello to your brother Vito. Wish you and the family well. Guys, thank you so much. I'm trying to make you and your, all your watchers smile. Laugh. You are, Greg. You are. Thank you, Rich. Thank you so much for hopping on. I really appreciate that. So like I said, the last, just think about it. Take tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I missed the Carlsberg factory. They shut that shit down when I was in Denmark. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, no matter what it is you want to do, whatever interest you have, okay? Thank you, Tenacious Freak. Just start something. Just give it a little bit of time. 45 minutes to an hour. Cheers, Jens. And, and, and think of where you'll be next year. You're not, it's not a competition. You're not going up against it. God bless you too, Richie. I miss you. I can't wait to give you a real hug when I see you in December. You're not going up against anybody. You're just doing what you want to do. Get better. Find the thing you want to do. Get creative. Whatever that is, whether it's a language, their mac and cheese is awesome. BC, go up to Mooney. Say hi to Richie. Really, just put in the effort. You'll get better each and every year. Um, and each and every day, and a year later, you'll be surprised how much better you got. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me. We went a extra long today. I don't give up. Zero, you know what they say. Had a great week, Dan, everyone. Thank you, Aquanuts. Much love to all you people out there that have joined me each and every week. I will not forget that you guys have supported me when, well, it's just this, right? This is it. We're here. We're having a good time. These are the beers. If you get a chance, Cousin Brian, thank you so much for sending these to me. Guys, have a great one. Greg Z, thank you so much to each and every one of you guys. Bye, Tenacious Freak. Bye, Aston. Are you still there? Jens, are you still there? Goodbye, Uncle John, Aunt Pauline, Pops, BC, Rich. Thank you so much, guys. Keep, keep doing it, okay? I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much. I'm Travel Man Dan, and remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.